Hey guys, Chris the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk a bit about dithering and how it can really help rescue images that sometimes you don't even notice need to be rescued. And uh, I'm going to give an example about an imaging session that I did recently. It's, it has been a very long while since I did any imaging and recently I was actually talking with QHY about um, returning the lunar unit they had given me of the excellent QHY 268M uh, camera and the associated filter wheel which I will be sending back to them very soon and you know I was just describing how after my accident I was still in pain which is true I still have trouble putting my own clothes on and uh, you will not see me standing up again <laughs> in this video because it is too painful but uh, that aside um, they gave me somehow the energy to uh, to do an imaging session even though I had ignored quite a few clear nights uh, among a few times of rain. So today it is raining. As we know rain is the best time to do astrophotography. Uh, but uh, yeah so um, it gives me time to look at an image that I took recently and the image and actually the calibration of the image had issues that I haven't noticed uh, because dithering like completely salvaged those issues. The issue that I have is actually very simple to fix. I need to take new flat frames but as you can see it is indeed raining. Um, my equipment is here under this beautiful hood but I'm not going to show you uh, completely because yes it is uh, raining and it is uh, I went back to um, um, a color camera because I simply didn't have the energy to deal with a uh, monochrome camera and I reorganized like the whole uh, balcony with the help of my lovely wife so that we have something that is small light portable and also protected from the wind by the uh, the walls on the side mostly and I did it was a uh, the night I took the pictures, there were nights with a lot of wind. It was right after a typhoon had passed through. And uh, yeah, it, it, I had guiding at like 0 0.8 arc seconds, which is um, very good. And it's with, it's with the AZ EQ uh, GT5 uh, mount, so small lights, and uh, the rain is getting a bit uh, worse. Uh, yeah, so um, that's um, pretty much what I did. And I pointed the camera along with the wide field telescope that's in there uh, to the um, North American Nebula. Uh, if, if someone can tell me why it's called the North American Neb Nebula, also I would love to know. And why that little blob thingy next to it or in the middle of it is called the Pelican Nebula is also something I'd love to know. But I pointed the camera there. I took around like uh, 400 exposures. Uh, out of those I had to throw away 170 due to clouds. I just blinked through the uncalibrated frames and then I just went through the weighted batch pre-processing in PixInsight. I know there's tons of like uh, new methods uh, these days but I'm still like old and set in my ways and we're gonna look at the end result of my stack and we'll see what rescued me was dithering but also the stat stacking processes that we use so see you inside okay and here we are inside and I have the picture ready here so I'm just gonna do is apply a screen transfer function that is unlinked so we get all of the colors and we can see the picture looks fine and the stars are pretty round um, we did get good tracking throughout everything looks fine and when I just stacked the picture without thinking I thought like everything's okay and then I looked as as I, as I usually do um, at the uh, at the stacking artifacts here they are, we can see them on the low rejection of my of the integration. And yes, so I can see that I'm not uh, properly polar aligned, but then my injury doesn't let me uh, crouch down and, and play with the uh, the adjustment knobs, knobs on the uh, on the mouth. So uh, you do what you can do. And um, it's great actually when to use this low here to actually uh, use the dynamic crop because I can I can program basically the dynamic crop on this image where I can see the um, uh, the stacking artifacts extremely clearly and I can adjust you know the the angle um, to get uh, to get something as close to what we want as possible. And here we are and I'm just going to apply the dynamic crop to my image directly rather than to the uh, to the rejection image and here we are we've done it and that's that's always an easy thing to do and then I look at my high rejection which is really the rejection of pixels that are outside of the average that are outlying pixels when doing the stacking of the images and I looked and I saw this which is something absolutely horrible and we can see it's in kind of a butterfly shape meaning that it was like 
before the meridian, the dots were here. After the meridians, the dots were here. And we can see that they're in groups of pixels that are forming kind of a triangle each time. And this is because we have pixels on each and every frame, those issues, and uh, they get uh, moved around by the dithering that I had. I had 400 frames of 60 seconds each, and uh, I dithered um, every five frames. And this is the, uh, the result of the dithering. And because I did the dithering, those white dots here were properly uh, understood by the stacking artifact as being outliers, and they were rejected from the stack, which is amazing. I looked at my light frames, my light frames were perfect. I looked at my dark frames, my dark frames were fine. I looked at my flat frames, they had all of those dots in the top right corner of the flat frame. So in, in this, uh, actually in this area of the, uh, of the flat frame. And so it was all due to the, uh, to the flat frames. Uh, and uh, the uh, reason for that is simply that um, I had cooled the camera and the 533MC Pro that I have, I don't know about others, has a small issue that apparently there are impurities within the sensor that can gather humidity when it's a warm and humid night like it was right after the typhoon. Um, and this humidity freezes around that imper imperfection, which is normally invisible, and causes those white dots on flat frames, not on darks because it, it depends on light to reveal those impurities. The workaround is to just wait 20 minutes after cooling the sensor or cooling the sensor slowly. Uh, so not a big deal, but I had completely forgotten about that. And I hadn't looked at my flat frames and I hadn't noticed this. And so I applied them without uh, noticing. And even after I had stacked, I hadn't noticed that my flat frames were uh, completely wrong. It's only after I looked here that I saw like this something weird. And this is a perfect example where dithering along with the t statistical automated tools that we have when we stack pictures that completely res rescued the image. Of course, I will be retaking my flat frames once it stops raining, but it's amazing to think that dithering once again saves the day and it can even like hide obvious issues with your calibration or with your um, imaging itself because of how powerful of a tool it is. So remember, dither or die. Never forget dithering if your mount has the capability. Um, and even some star trackers accept dithering commands on RA access only. And even that, I would highly suggest uh, using dithering on such mounts. So that's pretty all that I wanted to talk about uh, today. Um, so again, dithering for the win, never forget it. And uh, with that, thank you so much uh, for watching. Um, if you like this video and you're not subscribed to the channel and you like astrophotography, feel free to go down below give a like, leave a comment, get subscribed, click that bell. Uh, but more important than that, remember to uh, look up at the stars and I'll see you next time. <laughs>